I want to thank you for your, your time and attention this afternoon, Tuesday, January the 24th, 2017. We're going to have three at least. This is the Council Economic Development Committee. I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Mr. Mitchell Farrell. And uh, when we get one more member, we'll have a quorum. But until then, we're going to get started. And, uh, and with that, let's uh, take any uh, public comment. Any cards? No cards. No cards. Then we will close public comment. And uh, proud to uh, welcome Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to take. Uh, Items one and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, on consent. Unless there's an objection, members? Okay, that will be the order. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, what's our next item? Item number two is an EWDD report relative to a request for proposals to develop a citywide economic development strategy. Right, let's invite the GM up to the table. Former council member. And uh, so you this is an issue, something that we've been talking about for a while, mm -hmm. something we all have a lot of interest in. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're excited the, uh, that we're on the precipice of an RFP being released, I hope. Yes, yes, we are more than ready. Madam GM, the floor is yours. Very, very eager to move ahead. Um, I don't know how much in depth you want me to go into. I know that everybody has a copy of our transmittal, so. Yeah, why don't you hit the highlights? Oh, I'm just and there might be a couple questions. Uh, obviously, we're looking for a contractor to uh, prepare our citywide strategy. We would still hope to be able to release the RFP in January. Uh, with now, initially, I think the, the plan was to uh, release it on the 10th. Yeah. Uh, a little past the 10th, you still think we can get it out in if we, January? And if so, what's, I, the, what's the return date? We've got about a week so that we'd have to have a placeholder in council to be able to get it approved and have it go forthwith. Okay, continue. It got uh, stuck in uh, another uh, office in December. We wanted to have it approved before the holidays, and right. then we lost time over the holidays. So um, if we're able to release in January, we can uh, shave some time here and there. The goal of uh, procuring the uh, contractor no later than April of 2017. So the deadline, we're moving the deadline into April from March 10th? Well, yeah, we, we, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we don't want to go beyond April of 2017. Uh, and that could be April the 1st, yeah, good. You know, for example. Okay. Um, so as you, as you know, the council back in 2016, November 2nd, 2016, uh, the council uh, authorized funds totaling $500,000 to be transferred to the unappropriated balance, from the unappropriated balance to EWDD contractual services account for the procurement of a qualified contractor to develop a citywide economic uh, development strategy. Um, we worked very closely with uh, your committee and the Ad Hoc Committee on Jobs and um, in May, May 27th of 2016, uh, these committees were uh, asked EWDD to prepare and present recommendations for a scope of work and request for proposals. So we did that and in fact it's, it's all there and, and complete now. Um, we really look to uh, have a contractor present us with a strategy that shows economic inclusion, how to use new economic development financing tools, how to help existing businesses grow, establish new business, and enhance competitiveness in areas where there is none. Uh, and also with a strong measure of an understanding that uh, 
poverty is a relative measure of inequality and uh, the fact that uh, people who live uh, at the poverty line or below lack resources that are necessary uh, to have a better quality of life. And to take a look very closely in, at categories, healthcare, housing, education, safety, transportation, um, and with a, with a perspective that in spite of the economic recovery taking place in the region, not all city residents have benefited from that. Um, and there is a strong belief that uh, the greater and deeper the uh, economic growth and prosperity uh, that takes place, the better it is for the uh, city, uh, citywide, and that uh, is the response to income stagnation and inequality. Um, the strategy is, is necessary on two fronts. First front would be uh, to apply for federal funds and recognizing that things have changed drastically. Um, and I understand that, but I, I think mm -hmm. we still have to see where we land. Uh, the first is with the Economic Development Administration. That was, that was my opening question. In fact, do we know if it's going to still exist, right? That, that's, I, heard it was, I heard it was on a chopping block, <clears throat> along with the, uh, the uh, humanities and arts and some other programs. That, mm -hmm. but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Well, we haven't gotten those answers yet, so yeah. we're going to push out <clears throat> and proceed um, with um, two things. One, a citywide economic development plan, and then secondarily as a subcategory of that, something called a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, which is strengths, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. And that would be uh, the, the strategy that we would present to, to the uh, Economic Development Administration at the federal level um, to have a very good understanding of uh, what it takes to uh, create uh, new jobs with living wages, with career pathways, to uh, use our city revenue to leverage and to stack with other sources of revenue to establish new businesses and grow existing businesses and to increase the median earnings uh, determine, to determine improved capacity for people who are low to moderate income uh, with a plan for the future. Um, included in our general analysis uh, would be uh, a mapping exercise which would focus on South Los Angeles, Boyle Heights, East Valley, Wilmington, Pico Union, and Westlake. Mm -hmm. um, to kick this RFP process off, we have generally worked with the former boundaries of the redevelopment areas uh, just as a place to start. Um, so there's, there's two sides to this. Um, citywide, uh, we're also going to ask the contractor to, uh, to test the economic resiliency of some of our city plans, uh, the ability to anticipate and uh, evaluate risk uh, on our city assets and our city's ability to respond, a five-year implementation plan with very specific metrics uh, to accomplish city goals with expected outcomes and objectives, and uh, the opportunity to take a look at our existing economic development initiatives and whether or not we need to improve the way we leverage our city resources um, and recommended roles and responsibilities to enhance citywide coordination and uh, facilitate further um, the coordination uh, between uh, us at the federal level, if that's at all possible. But, um, you know, what we're doing now in terms of our own city uh, economic development. Yeah, well, I think this, we need a plan <clears throat> when, like you said, whether or not we're able to connect with the federal, at the yeah. federal level, we still need to have a, a yeah. local plan. Let me ask you this, uh, 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 Madam Jim. Um, when we heard this item in May, we, we, we talked about uh, including analysis of the city's tax policies. Right. <clears throat> and on a separate occasion, uh, also requested that the study provide recommendations for tax uh, subvention uh, uh, strategies. Was that incorporated into the RFP? If not, why not? Um, we I actually had a conversation uh, before the meeting and uh, yesterday with the Chief Legislative Analyst Office, and we all came to the conclusion that the issue of, of subvention, uh, tax subvention policy, and where we need to uh, improve and whether or not it's working is sufficiently specific and requires a uh, skilled analysis from someone who is either um, has a legal tax background, uh, that we felt that it's something that should be done separately and because it's a massive enough undertaking uh, that it deserves its own own platform. Mm. And so we'll either, uh, I'll have to talk to the CLA and the CAO about this, either select from a list of our existing contractors, if there's somebody on the list who has that uh, area of expertise, 
uh, because that would be faster, obviously, than going out to an, an, yet another RFP. Right, yeah. On, on we want to try to expedite it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the RFP mentions that the strategy includes evaluating the, quote, impact of risk on the city's key economic assets. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had difficulty even managing our, our assets in the past, oftentimes not even knowing <laughs> where they are. Mm -hmm. Will the consultant provide recommendations as to how we can better manage our assets? Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we will be asking the consultant to give us a full integrated approach to, you know, opportunities to uh, have a, a logical flow to what uh, it means to do asset management here in the city, not just, you know, siloed in GSD and, and the ma assets that we manage over at EWDD and some in other departments, but a, a coordinated effort if that is the most effective and efficient way to leverage. And just again on timing, uh, give us the, give us the, the, the kind of the flow. Uh, once it, uh, the RFP is actually issued, then what's the timing? Thirty days, ninety days, sixty well, days, hundred eighty days. As I days. said, we'd like to be able to make the uh, to be able to issue this uh, to come in uh, before. We'd like to be able to issue this if you have this go to council, say this week or next week, and then we can uh, get it sent forth with and then we can um, um, set the goal of uh, procuring a uh, contractor no later than April uh, 2017, because it's going to take them about eight months to do all the work and to do all the community meetings and the outreach. And the so we get, we get a report back uh, early 18, you're saying? Yeah. Roughly. And that's assuming everything goes well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, once the study comes back, uh, will EWDD be in charge of the recommendations, the implementation, implementing the plan, or what's the? Do you well, know? what we intend to do is, once the contractor has been selected, is to have a working group uh, with uh, relevant uh, departments uh, on a weekly basis to work with the contractor to make sure that they're hitting their benchmarks, that we're moving forward, make sure they're getting the information that they need from either internal or external, mm -hmm. uh, so we can keep this on a very tight, tight leash to move it forward um, to hit our time goal. And if you can keep the committee posted on what's happening yeah, and when absolutely. it's happening and, and how time, it's happening. You know, I mean, yeah, just, we can just, do it once just, a month if you just want. Just give us updates so that we can yeah. help you push it through as well. Yes. We've been joined by uh, our colleague, uh, Senator Gil Cedillo. Uh, members, any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to see you, Ms. Perry. Um, I look very forward to uh, to seeing this process through and, and seeing what uh, uh, an economic development strategy will look like for the city of Los Angeles. And my head is swimming with ideas and just thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll keep most of those to myself. But uh, I just think it's an exciting, uh, an exciting initiative. Uh, and so I congratulate anyone who uh, has uh, been leading the effort to, to see this through. I, I think some of the things we have to work with are one of the things that's going on uh, in, in my mind as, as I'm hearing about this and, and you're speaking is uh, an example of something that's happening right now uh, before us uh, because these, you know, the, an economic development strategy is going to really involve all partners. It's going to be an all hands on deck approach. And we have so much to work with in Los Angeles, which is sometimes our largest obstacle uh, when it, it should be really our largest asset. Um, we have business interests and we have labor interests and more often than not, the two of those work in concert and the unprecedented coalition opposing Measure S is, an, uh, uh, I think, uh, a factor into an overall economic development strategy in a reverse kind of way uh, because of, of the risk to the Los Angeles economy um, that that implies. Um, so uh, I think that you're... As, as you see this process through, you're going to, to find lots of willing partners um, on how to make the Los Angeles economy work better for everyone in every neighborhood. Um, another, another asset that we have, is, of course, is our work source centers, and, and I don't need to tell you that, but I think that uh, it'll be interesting to see what role they play um, in, in terms of, uh, I, I think, elevating the profile of the services they provide um, and then driving more Angelinos to, to get involved in, in uh, 
the work source centers and, and all that they are able to do. And then also the promise zones and the, the promise neighborhoods, <coughs> the federally designated uh, uh, you know, neighborhoods, and how those are in large part already in areas where there is great economic disparity and how that could inform this process as well. Um, and then a focus on where uh, intensified economic development and growth is happening. And it's really just a handful of neighborhoods. And of course, we need to, to kind of find out what the, well, you know, what the secret code is for getting investment in other parts of the city. Um, it shouldn't just be things booming in downtown, Hollywood, and the west side. Um, and, and it certainly isn't limited to that and as we climb our way out of the recession. But we have so many opportunity sites in the North Valley, in South LA, um, east, in all directions, that we should be able to promote as really great locations to bring companies to, to bring jobs to, to invest in. And um, so I, uh, I, I hope we have a, a, whole, a comprehensive approach for all 469 square miles of Los Angeles. Um, at the same time, understand the, the incredible disparity from one, one neighborhood to the next, sometimes just miles apart, and how that could actually work in our favor mm -hmm. in terms of an overall sort of global economic uh, development strategy approach. Uh, so I'm optimistic about this, and I, and I hope it's a very comprehensive look that will give us kind of new ideas on how to link all of these things that we have going so that we can encourage um, greater, uh, greater investment and interest, quite frankly, and interest in our neighborhoods that just don't have the benefits that other neighborhoods have. Uh, so well done, and I, I look forward to seeing this process through and supporting it every step of the way. Thank you, Councilman Farrell. Let me just uh, <clears throat> echo something you mentioned, and that was the, uh, the promise zone. We know this is, not, this, this is a real unique resource, mm -hmm. and, and you know, one of the best uh, benefits is being able to leverage, as you suggested, leverage some resources, some federal resources. So I hope that, uh, that we can direct the uh, contractor to focus on, uh, certainly when the discussion about South LA, focus on what we need to be doing uh, in conjunction with the um, the um, working group to to really leverage and take advantage of the designation uh, going after grants. Yeah. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Councilwoman, uh, for helping move this process forward. I just had a question because I'm struck by the unique uh, position that Los Angeles has uh, in. Uh, with regard to our economy, but also with regard to our position in the country and, and the world, uh, we you know, face a situation where inequality pulls at this city as much as anywhere else. In fact, we probably have greater extremes uh, than other, most other places. Um, and we see what can happen around the world when those kind of inequalities exist or, or are allowed to uh, grow stale. Um, at the same time, uh, it's a very exciting place. We've got the biggest public works programs in the world really here outside of uh, mainland China are here in the city of Los Angeles and uh, we've got innovative uh, collaborations like uh, the Promise Zone and others. Uh, I'm wondering, um, being new to this, um, uh, lots of times when we put out RFPs we get responses from the usual suspects. And so our choices are pretty, uh, pretty limited. Is it your expectation that we will get some, are you expecting to see surprise um, applicants or uh, folks with innovative ideas um, that might break the mold of what we would normally get in, in for, with this type of, putting out this type of request? I expect to, I, uh, Jan Perry, General Manager, Economic and Workforce Development Department. I expect to see, um, we may see some usual suspects, but I also expect to see uh, people who we may not expect. I, I would not be surprised if we got some responses from uh, infrastructure companies who have the capacity uh, to do this kind of analysis um, because I know that it's taking place in other parts of the country. Even this morning I had a meeting with a gentleman from a group called uh, London First and he gave me, they're, they're, they, it's an organization they look for best practices 
from all over the world because they want to make London the greatest city in the world. Uh, so he left me his uh, economic development report <clears throat> and it was done by, well, I won't say the name of the company, but they do work over here. And it was extremely, extremely good. Uh, one of the best I've ever seen. Um, because it would be uh, the kind of document where I could hand to you and then you could look at it and you can actually base budget priorities on it uh, based on metrics, mapping, uh, uh, extrapolations, forecasting, uh, where you'd go in a year, where you go to five years. Um, so, you know, not everybody can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I also expect that uh, for somebody to get an edge, they will have to have a team that recognizes the importance of diversity uh, in economic development because it opens up new markets and brings other perspectives that might not otherwise be uh, considered. So I think we may have a ray, an array of very interesting responses. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. That was an excellent question. And I want to piggyback on that as well. And, and I agree. I think it's going to be a chance for us to reach out perhaps to the university community. Mm -hmm. Uh, to to the uh, maybe non-traditional consulting communities, as, right. as you suggested, maybe the you know companies uh, that do uh, construction have a unit that could do some research, this kind of research. And so I hope that we do throw a wide net out and certainly benefit from the usual suspects, but also uh, you know identify some 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 different thought, mm -hmm. different thought. Any other comments? Okay. Okay, we will uh, we'll approve the uh, the report recommendations. And can we get a placeholder in council so we can? Uh, okay, let's move this. Let's arrange that. We can. We'll do that. All right. Thank you. All right. Appreciate thank you very much. Is there any other business before us uh, at this time? No, sir. Seeing that, seeing none. This meeting is adjourned.